the system um, can never meet the nation's needs um, for um, retirement security. Gilar Ducci once called the 401k an immature, underdeveloped child that needs help over a mud puddle to the curb when crossing a street. While we disagree, we love the imagery. A labor economist and nationally recognized expert in retirement security with the New School for Social Research, Gilar Ducci is a consistent and prolific advocate for a better system, however defined. She often partners with industry and political heavyweights, like Blackstone's Tony James and presidential advisor Kevin Hassett. We asked if she still feels the same way about 401ks, what a well-designed system needs, in her opinion, and why 401k father Ted Benna agrees with her view. Teresa, I'd like to start a somewhat contrarian today and have you say some nice things about the 401k. Uh, the 401k um, has a really good principle, and that is when people are working, that they contribute to an advanced funded retirement plan. That's the only way I can really think of it as an economist or as an actuary. Um, you advance fund your future self, um, not only through your own contributions, um, but you also advance fund your future self with your employer's contributions, and you get a tax break for it. So for the people who are in a situation where they have a 401k, um, decide to contribute, trigger their employer match, and earn income such that they get a significant um, um, benefit from the federal government you know, and their state government through a deduction, the system works well. So it follows the principles of a well-designed pension system, the 401k system. You contribute early, often, at work, and you have help from the employer and the government. So for those who um, have the opportunity, it can work pretty well. We love this, but you once called the 401k an immature, underdeveloped child. Do you still feel that way? Um, absolutely, and I think that it will never grow up. So it is a child um, that will never be mature. The system um, can never meet the nation's needs um, for um, retirement security. It works well um, to create what I've been calling the tale of two retirements. Um, it is a system for the past 40 years that have led – the privileged um, create a good retirement. You know, so the tale of the two retirements is one retirement where especially those of us in our 50s and 60s have enjoyed the run up in the stock market. Uh, we may have been smart and invested our, our 401ks well. That's probably luck or, or wisdom. And, um, and we are now moving into an era where we will have, because of the 401k system, being immature, underdeveloped, and never able to grow up, have created more inequality in our retirement prospects than we've ever had before. Let, let me just say uh, where it's immature. It's immature, and we were hoping for it to grow up by covering more people. But um, the way the na labor market is, is that the 401k system has only really reached in any consistent way half the workforce. So it's immature in coverage. It's immature in terms of the way um, money is invested. Um, the fiduciary rule and the um, conf conflicts that employers feel never got us to a point where workers really have good options um, and a good way to, to manage their portfolios. And it never developed a way that people could deaccumulate in a smart way. So a well-designed system has to have 100% coverage, really good investments, and a good accumulation. So I don't see the structure of the 401k now ever meeting those priorities. Understood. You have so many proposals with so many high-profile partners that we have trouble keeping up. Uh, what is your latest with conservative economist Kevin Hassett? Yeah, so um, I've had a lot of proposals, and I think I've been wise um, in, in inviting partners. Um, the proposal with Kevin Hassett is, um, has the structure of the proposal I've had for, what is it, 20 years, which is actually a proposal that others have had since the very beginning of the 401k system. And even Ted Benna wanted a proposal like mine. Um, it's a proposal that has every worker have a supplemental Social Security account that's advanced funded, invested well, um, and, um, and is deaccumulated in a partial annuity. 
So what's my proposal with the latest version of this is a thrift savings plan for most people. The thrift savings plan for you, your listeners who don't know, but they probably do, is the sort of the 401k plan for federal workers. So federal workers have an advanced funded defined contribution like plan where they have a very limited choice of mostly indexed options, actually all index options, and they are automatically put into it and the employer, the federal government, automatically contributes. Um, so we have very little opt out, even with, among low income workers in the thrift savings plan. It's well managed with a heavy hand from the administrators so that the choices, you really can't go wrong with the kind of choices you have and the, and the way it's structured. Older people um, invest in something called the guaranteed fund, the G fund, uh, which is appropriate for their age and, and risk profile. And younger people invest in more aggressive options. You know, that's, that's what we all want. And then they smoothly fulfill their, you know, their work obligations, um, retire, and there's an easy deaccumulation option. So we want that for private sector workers who don't have anything. Our proposal specifically is to have a thrift savings um, plan like plan. It won't be, it may be, be a sidecar of the federal system. So, okay, everybody, it's a big federal system. Um, and it has some of the same options. And it would provide, this is the key thing I think employers would be interested in. It gets the employer off the hook. You know, our low, our low um, paying employers, so the low paid sector, those employers can't, won't contribute to a 401k. They just can't or won't. And I'm sick of figuring out why. They just won't. You know, 40 years they've told us they can't and they won't. So the government will step in and provide a, a, a 1%, 2%, 3% match, whatever Congress feels feels is appropriate, but the bigger the better. That will be matched by the low-income worker, again, one, two, or three, the bigger the better. Employers might actually pay their workers more. A part of the uh, an increase in the minimum wage could go to their future selves. Um, but the plan isn't highly embroidered like my previous plans. Um, this is more a framework. Um, but the principles are everybody's in a plan and the government provides a match to low income workers. Aren't state plans taking care of that? No, the state plans are baby steps. Um, the state plans are something that actually Kennedy, Senator Kennedy wanted about 30 years ago. Um, and that was that everybody would be kicked into something called an individual retirement account. And then workers would kind of go from there. Once they were in a plan, the hope is that they would contribute um, their pay. The state plans aren't aren't, run, aren't regulated by ERISA, and they don't have employer involvement except the payroll deduction. And we all know, we all know, because we're in the business, we sort of know human behavior, we know employer behavior, that if employers and their competitors don't kick into a plan, they won't. And we also know low-income workers have a hard time voluntarily saving every paycheck, especially when they move jobs. So these state plans have a kind of a third right. You know, a, a third of, they go a third of the way is what I meant, is that they, um, the principle that everybody should be in a plan at some point is a good one. But there are really no mechanisms in these state plans to keep people in, keep them contributing, and deaccumulate. So the state plans aren't a substitute for this. You mentioned Ted Benna. Uh, do you talk to him often about your proposals? And do you have a sense that he's happy with what he's created? <laughs> so Ted Benna and I have been in green rooms together um, that we're often paired, you know, as a pro uh, a pro 401k and an anti 401k. And that makes for good TV. That makes for good radio. But over time, um, Ted Benna has been quoted to say, uh, I agree with Teresa. She's absolutely right. The system has not grown up. The system has not developed the way I thought it would. And I created a monster. Um, and so um, Ted is a very wise man, not only because he agrees with Teresa, um, but because he has eyes um, you know, and ears. And, you know, John, the people who are listening to you are people that I've talked to quite a bit, 401k uh, providers. And I think that if we were in a room 
and uh, they didn't feel threatened by me, that they would agree with everything I said, and I get a lot of my wisdom from people on the ground, you know, like, like your listeners. Um, they have told me that they would want the employer to be more active in, in education, but for many reasons, the employer doesn't want to give the advice. They all tell me that the defined benefit system was better. Um, maybe it wasn't great for brokers, you know, or for advisors, but the defined benefit system where employees couldn't get out of it and they um, had a, an annuity paid at the end of their working life was actually better. And that turns out to be true in the data. I have data from people um, who are in their 50s and I see them until death. And the ones that have a DB plan for one, two, three, four, even five employers do a lot better than the ones who have little bits of 401ks. They're not as worried, they have more money, it replaces more of their income, they can plan their lives a little bit better, their stress levels are down. Um, so a, what my plan with this very unlikely partner, a Trump economic advisor, Kevin Hassett, who's very smart, very funny, very quick. Um, we've come together as economists. We both agree that um, that having an automatic way to save, de-accumulate at the end of your life, invested in like reasonable ways, maybe not optimal ways with, with all the bells and whistles, um, is really the way to supplement Social Security. What is the Economic Innovation Group and how did it come about? So the Economic Innovation Group is, is one of these big organizations in Washington I'm just kind of learning about. They do research and they do lobbying. Um, and they have like really great um, communication. Um, so Economic Innovation Group has been um, a big organization uh, run by John Letiri, who is a smart policy analyst um, who takes policy entrepreneurial ideas and kind of make them real and, and, and are wise about the way policy is made. So in, Economic Innovation Group has been associated with kind of Republican ideas, the economic opportunity zones, but also are smart about things like the child um, tax credit. Um, they're filled with wonky people with good communication skills. Um, what happens, you know, how a bill becomes law is lots and lots of um, communication and lots of ways of meeting people on both sides. So my involvement with EIG has been some of the most most rewarding involvement as an academic, I've had as an academic. I've, I've learned um, that you need to talk to people who are Republicans and, and Democrats and you need to talk to the, the experts who validate, you know, for Democrats and, and uh, Republicans. It's actually looking at the way representative democracy works up close and I, and I really like it. Uh, and I'm really glad I'm sort of talking to you because without grassroots support for a comprehensive pension plan, it won't go anywhere. You know, the you know the professionals in your field have to know, have to tell Congress that the 401k works great for some people, but a plan like ours, TSP for most, is needed for the people that the 401k plan and the system won't reach. You mentioned Republicans and Democrats. Are you encouraged by the amount of retirement saving focused legislation currently in play? No. Um, I think that, you know, we've watched it go on for, you know, 30 years. And since ERISA was passed, it seems as though legislators have been content on responding to crises like the multi employer plan or tweaking around the edges. Um, um, in fact, we saw the last big round of legislation was to kind of go down hard on defined benefit plans, making sure they were advanced funded. Um, and a lot of that was to, um, you know, to get tax revenues. Even, even the Roth IRA was kind of a tweak in order to get revenues in now to the Treasury and, you know, and, and deal with you know, not having revenues later. So I think a lot of the... Um, the much vaulted Secure Act and, and, and everything else is really just tweaking on a system that's fundamentally flawed. Um, and I hate to use words, they sound like fighting words, fundamentally flawed, but, but I mean it in a nice way. <laughs> um, that the 401k system will never have universal voluntary coverage. 
the commercial aspect of it means that a lot of advice and a lot of choices that people have to invest serve the money management industry, not the individual. And um, you can't have private annuities because of adverse selection and moral hazard. I mean, the poor, the pity the poor private um, and, um, annuity provider, they know that people who want annuities are the people who are going to live longer, so they have to charge you know, accordingly. So you only can have like really, really big group annuities to make any sense for people. And the best group annuity is Social Security. Um, so I would love it if people could accumulate money for the rest of their lives and then buy some extra Social Security credits. That would be a really good system. And then we can go home and solve climate change problems or all sorts of other problems. But this one's kind of easy, John. But you asked me a question, if it's easy, why hasn't Congress fixed it? I don't know. I'm an academic, but um, we really just need to save, invest it well, and deaccumulate it in a secure way. Teresa, that is exactly what we needed. Thank you so much for joining us. We do appreciate it. Thank you.